In July 1990, Cyprus submitted an official application for full membership to the then European Economic Community. After 14 years, Cyprus became a full member of the EU in May 2004. In 2007, Cyprus applied for full membership of the European Monetary Union. In order to join the Euro, Cyprus had to meet the economic indicators prescribed by the Maastricht Treaty. And it did. In 2007, the country had a gross domestic product, or GDP, of 15.8 billion euro, meaning that it produced products and services worth 15.8 billion. It also owed 8.4 billion euro. In economic terms, Cyprus's debt was 53% of its GDP, well within the 60% threshold set by the treaty. The government's tax income was 7.1 billion and its expenditure 6.5, thus producing a profit or a surplus of 0.5 billion amounting to 3.5% of its GDP, higher than most EU countries including Germany. The Maastricht Treaty accepts up to a loss of 3%. Therefore, Cyprus was 6.5 percentage points above the deficit threshold set by the treaty. Having met the Maastricht indicators, Cyprus joins the Economic and Monetary Union and adopts the euro on the 1st of January 2008. As an EMU member, Cyprus enjoyed debt levels far below the European average and even below Germany's. On September 15, 2008, Lehman Brothers, the investment bank, collapsed, triggering a global financial crisis. Nevertheless, Cyprus continued to ride a bubble of prosperity and fears of the economic being hit by the global financial crisis were played down by the then president and high-ranking officials, including the then Minister of Finance. Having no exposure in the US toxic mortgage investments, there was a delusion that the crisis would not affect the island. Public spending continued to grow aggressively in the form of benefits and public sector payroll increases, guided by the government's pre-electoral commitments, even though the tax income started falling as tourism got impacted by the global crisis and housing slowed down. Meanwhile, the rise of the island as a financial centre, given its low corporate tax rate, its many tax treaties and traditional, highly skilled services orientated workforce, also helped build relationships and trust with foreign companies who saw Cyprus as a safe European alternative to other tax havens. The growing number of business transactions going through the Cypriot banking system and the influx of foreign deposits encouraged Cypriot banks to give out more loans and expand aggressively in other countries, mainly Greece. A direct result of the abundance of loans was the fueling of a housing bubble and an increasingly overheating economy in Cyprus. Housing prices rose 50% since 2006 and private loans reached the second highest ratio per GDP in Europe, higher than Greece. In 2009, the new socialist government in Greece revised the estimate of the government budget deficit for 2009, nearly doubling the existing estimate of 6.7% to 12.7% of GDP. This cast a heavy shadow on Greece's debt sustainability, triggering a series of downgrades by credit rating agencies. Greece's cost of borrowing from the market increased with a rapid rate. In April 2010, Greece asked for a bailout from the EU and the IMF after being unable to borrow from the international markets. The debt that other countries, banks and individuals had lent the Greek government, in the form of Greek bonds, was getting riskier each day. Meanwhile, the two big Cyprus banks continued their aggressive expansion. By December 2010, 30% of all Bank of Cyprus and 43% of all Laigi's loans were in Greece. 
In the last nine months of 2010, the two Cypriot banks also grew their Greek bond holding by 20% to 5.8 billion euro. Their total exposure in Greece was more than one and a half times Cyprus's GDP. In comparison, Barclays halved its exposure to Greek bonds over the same period. The total Cypriot banking sector ended up being as big as eight times GDP, which meant that banks had assets worth eight times what Cyprus produced in a year. They became too big for Cyprus to save if anything went wrong. Insured deposits under 100,000 euro amounted to 32 billion, while the Fund of Deposit Guarantee Scheme had just 150 million euro. In the same year, with a deficit as high as 5.3% of GDP and forecasted to worsen, the EU put Cyprus under financial supervision. The bad state of the public finances, along with the disproportionate exposure of Cypriot banks to Greece, prompted a gradual downgrade of Cyprus's credit rating by international agencies, thus making it more difficult for the state to borrow. Finally, in May 2011, the cost of credit from international markets reached such high levels that it was impossible for Cyprus to borrow. In the same year, an explosion near the main electricity power plant in Cyprus wiped out 53% of the island's electricity production and amounted to heavy human and financial losses. The then cash-strapped Cypriot government turned to Russia and secured a 2.5 billion loan to cover its mid-term needs and buy time, postponing the application to the EU and the IMF for financial assistance. By February 2012, the rumours of a Greek haircut materialised by what came to be known as the private sector involvement. The PSI formed a part of the Greek bailout package agreed by Greece and the Troika, the International Monetary Fund, the European Central Bank and the European Commission. According to the PSI, private lenders to Greece agreed to a voluntary reduction to what Greece owed them. The PSI had a major impact, about 75% loss on Greek and Cypriot banks, which held a considerable amount of Greek bonds. However, the loss to Greek banks would be countered by the rescue package agreed for Greece. The Cypriot government did not negotiate for its own banks to be included in the rescue package, even though the required amount was a small fraction of the Greek rescue package, but a quarter of the Cyprus GDP. With both its major banks in need for recapitalization and being unable to cover the amount, Cyprus applied for an EU bailout on June 25, 2012. The first attempts for the formulation of a programme were made in July and then the negotiation restarted in September. Delays in reaching a final agreement with the Troika caused market uncertainty and led to a significant deterioration of the economy and the banking system. In November 2012, and faced with the imminent collapse of Lygi Bank. The government was forced to agree to a bailout memorandum of understanding and passed a batch of 24 laws aimed at implementing the provisions of the memorandum. However, a decision by the Eurogroup endorsing the bailout memorandum was postponed until after the release of a report by independent bank auditors PIMCO regarding the exact amount needed to recapitalize Cypriot banks. The report was due in late January 2013. An interim report in December put the worst-case recapitalization figure at 10 billion. Pending the final PIMCO report, the government and the central bank drafted a bill in January, never taken to parliament or publicized, regulating the restructuring of Lygi Bank and depositors' contributions. In January and February, the government, in a desperate attempt, borrowed 235 million from three profitable semi-governmental organizations to pay wages and pensions in the public sector. The Electricity Authority of Cyprus, the Cyprus Telecommunications Authority, 
and the Cyprus Ports Authority. The final PIMCA report was handed two weeks before the presidential election. In February, Cyprus elected a new president. And in March, after publicly pledging that depositors' contribution is out of the question, he then flew to the Eurogroup meeting and agreed just that. <laughs>